Thank you, dear God. We thank you again in a very grand way. We are very privileged to believe that you're shining your light upon us. And so to you be the glory and to you be the honor. We appreciate the idea in mind to have a brighter day. We appreciate certainly you are showering your love upon us, your mercy, your kindness. And then we say that God, with you on our side, there is nothing that we cannot overcome. So again, we say thank you for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you will be doing for us in the very near future. This is a good day. This is the Lord's day. To him be honor, glory, and our prayers, dear God, that you allow us to worship you this day in spirit and also uh, in truth. Uh, certainly, we have much to be thankful for, not just on what had occurred on yesterday, but because you allowed us to have another opportunity to say thank you, another opportunity to ourselves above ground for we are aware every day above ground is a good day perhaps there are some days better than others but certainly it's good to be here good to be alive and again to you be all the glory and all the honor we'd like to uh make mention of some folks that are on our prayer request that needs to be added that been shared with us number one we'd like to uh ask that you consider and pray for uh sister chisholm uh, keep her, please, uh, in your prayers. And certainly, uh, Sister Kathleen, as she is continually to, to men, Kathleen Washington. Uh, let's also keep in mind uh, Sister uh, Jenny Johnson. And let's make sure that we keep her in prayer. Uh, also, Sister Laverne, if you would, please. Uh, Tannis Evans also has a grandfather that we understand that's in the hospital. Uh, let's please pray that things go well for him. We also like you to consider uh, Tamika uh, Crockett. She has a a sister and also a brother in the hospital, and a sister too right now to our understanding that's uh, basically uh, on life support, basically. Uh, certainly there'll be some decisions that need to be made uh, in the very future. Let's ask God certainly to, to give them the strength, give them the ability to make the best decision that they know how. Also, let's pray for uh, Vanessa, if you would, please. A prayer in particular for her daughter, uh, for a decision that she is uh, about to make in regard to her future. Let's keep that in mind. And again, let's pray also for uh, the now uh, uh, president and vice president of the United States, uh, that you, dear God, will bless them in your own uh, a special way. And certainly for uh, the new elected uh, uh, president of the United States, uh, uh, Joe Biden, and also uh, the new elected vice president, Kamala Harris. Uh, let's pray, dear God, or uh, we're asking you to help us to help them whatever way we can. But we know we're going to need you yeah. in a very special way. But we certainly thank you for what you've done uh, uh, for us. Help this country, dear God, recognize that uh, there was an election yesterday. But you know something? You've always been in charge. You said, hi, you look low. And everything we knew was going to be all right, regardless or what way the decision went. Again now, if you would, let us please go to our God in prayer. Most high, most loving, most kind, most powerful, most awesome God Almighty, we're very thankful that we have a God like you. And we ask you to God to, to guide us in our heart, guide us in our mind, help us to do those kind of things that will bring glory and honor to your holy and precious and righteous name. We pray right now, dear God, in particular for those who we have tried to make knowledge about. We pray for our sister Chisholm, dear God, that you aid her, that you comfort her, uh, that you bless her uh, from the surgery that she has undergone. We also pray for sister Janie Johnson, dear God, that you will strengthen her, that you give her the thing that you see uh, that she stands in need of. We pray for Laverne, dear God, that whatever may be going on in her life, that you are able to uh, mend her wherever she may be torn, that you will build her up wherever she may be leaning. We also pray to God for uh, Sister Tandis' uh, grandfather, their God. Uh, bless him while he's in the hospital and even when he is able to come out. Give the doctors, their God, the knowledge and understanding what they need to do to uh, be of good service to him. We also pray to God for uh, Tamika uh, Crockett, their God. Uh, oftentimes, uh, those that are on the outside looking in uh, that have very 
uh, little uh, power to do anything but just be there. We ask you to comfort her, that you'll give her uh, certainly the thing that she stands in need of. Prepare for her sister Barbara, dear God, that you bless her. Bless her in a mighty, mighty special way. Her, her brother also, dear God, Ray, John Ray, that you give him the thing that he stands in need of. And then, dear God, we also pray for Vanessa's uh, daughter as she goes about trying to make a decision in regard to the future. I'll pray that she'll base it on you and what your desire is in her life. We also pray, as we said earlier, for uh, the now uh, uh, president of the United States and also the vice president and their families. Uh, grant them, their God, the thing that you see that they stand in need of. You see some things in their lives, certainly, that we're not even aware about. And we know that you're able to, to give them what they stand in need of. And so we ask you, yes, their God, bless them and bless them in a mighty, mighty special way. But also, their God, we certainly ask you now for our new elected uh, uh, president of the United States, uh, Joe Biden, for our new elected vice president of the, of the United States, Kamala Harris, that you grant them the, the wisdom, grant them the uh, ability, uh, grant them, their God, the patience that they'll need and help them, their God, to recognize again that it's because of you they are where they are. And without you, uh, things would be miserable and there will be less that can be achieved. Help us, their God, as uh, citizens of this country and also especially those of us who are members of your, your, your body. Help us, dear God, to do what we can while we can to help this country be a, a better country. Thank you most of all, dear God, for Jesus, who died to one day give us an opportunity to see your face in peace. It's in us holy, precious, and righteous name that we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. Good morning. Morning. Our first song is Soon and Very Soon in the Supplemental Songbook, number 53. <clears throat> soon and Very Soon, number 53 in the Supplemental Songbook. We sing all three stanzas. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. No more dying there. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning and welcome to the Folly Road Church of Christ Sunday morning worship service. And every day, every day is a good day. Today we are happy to be here for all those that will 
tune in by whatever form of communication you may have, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Zoom, whatever. We are so glad to have you this morning. Hope that you will benefit from having been uh, on this lesson this morning. This lesson this morning is going to be taken from the book of Mark. The book of Mark, the chapter is 11, and the verse is 22. Mark, chapter 11, and verse 22. And verse 22 reads, And Jesus answering and said unto them, Have faith in God. That concludes the scripture reading. And may God again bless the hearers and the doers of his holy and divine word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we are again this day. Happy to be alive. Happy to be at this time, at this place, even in Lord, that we can rejoice this day. Happiness all around, Lord, even from heaven above. Lord, we are thankful for all that you have done for us. Allah, all that you have allowed us to experience. All that you allow us to enjoy and endure and see from where we have come uh, to where you have brought us from to where we are at this present time. Lord, we are so thankful. We are mindful about how we got there. It was you who have brought us from whatever distance that we had to come, we came by your mercy and for, by your grace. Lord, we are, again, just, just indebted to you for our very lives, for our soul, for our hope, for our faith, for our trust in you. Father, we thank you so much. And Lord, we want to do all that we can to fulfill our obligation to you by giving you all the love that you deserve. Father, we thank you again this morning, most of all for your son, Jesus Christ, who would follow uh, your command and come from earth, from glory to this old sin dark on earth, that we all that live here might have a right to the tree of life. Father, we thank you for sending your son. Thank you, son, for coming. Thank you for the life he lived, for the death that he died, for the blood that he shed, for the salvation that he brought down. Father, we thank you so much even for this morning, that we can uh, still worship you, I pray, on the first day of the week as you have commanded that we give you the honor and the glory and the praise and all the things that you uh, need to have that we should provide that to you or we should give to you. We, we should do it with honor and with, with, with praise, with, with gratitude, with hum, uh, humility. God, let us help, uh, uh, help us to do all that we can to to, to let you know, uh, uh, Father, we thank you uh, even this morning for those that are members of your son's body, those that are sick, those that are not uh, as, as well as they would like to be. We, we ask you, Lord, because we know that you have the power. You are the great physician. You, you can do more than anybody we know that can, we can add. We, we, we know that you are God, and beside you there is no other. Uh, the psalmist says, I will look unto the hill from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made the heaven and the earth. Father, we, we know what you're capable of doing. We just ask you to do that we cannot do for ourselves. We ask you, Lord, for uh, help with those that are, are sick and those that are bereaved, those that are just downtrodden, those that are caught up with the cares and the concerns of this present world. We ask you to help us all, Lord. To, to count on you, to, to bring our burden to you and just leave it there, Lord, and that we can see uh, uh, from earth to glory if we can just put our trust in you. Father, we thank you even this morning for a time like this where the preacher can come and again just pour out his heart unto this, uh, to all of us as we listen to your word. Uh, Father, we, we can just see your, your, your word just taking over in our lives and and, and the things that we know that we should do and the things that we should say and, and just help our lives be improved. 
We can see the light of hope uh, in your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we ask you to, to bless him and just be able to uh, say all the right things this morning and, and that someone would decide to change from their wicked ways and turn to Jesus Christ before it's everlasting too late. Father, then when, Lord, when we come down to the end of our journey and we can stay here no longer, we ask you, Lord, to give us a place. Give us a resting place that in that city called heaven. And we'll be there throughout all eternity just praising you for all your goodness and all your mercy and all your grace. These things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and your only begotten Son. Let us all say amen. Seven oh two, Charles Dock on every hand. Seven zero two, Charles Dock on every hand. Sing first, second, and last stanza. <clears throat> first, second, and last stanza. Seven zero two. You got it. Let's sing. Charles Dock on every hand, and we cannot understand. All the way that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eyes and we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, well, by and by. Oh, and I'm telling you, all the saints of God together in home, and we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Oh, our cherished plan the field. Disappointment has prevailed, and we wandered in the darkness, heavy hearted and alone. But we're trusting in the Lord, and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, oh, when the morning comes, I'm telling you, all the saints of God together in home, and we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptation is near, often take us unaware. And our hearts are made to bleed for each thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, we will understand it by and by. Oh, well, by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, I'm telling you. All the saints of God in gathering home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by by. Oh, well, by and by. I'm telling you all the same God I 
gathering and the story and even Amen. We ask you please if you would to open your Bibles to the book of Mark. The chapter is chapter number 11. And we'd like you to notice around verse number 22 again. That's Mark chapter 11. And the verse is verse number 22. We find these words. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. That is a common element that unites all of us, whether we recognize it or not. Doesn't matter uh, where you live, who you are, what race you are, what color you are. Doesn't matter what gender you are. There is a common, like I say, the element that really unites us in common uh, like no other. And that is that we all, whether we want to accept it or not, that we all have need. I'm going to say it again. That there's something that's common for all of us. And that thing is that we all have a need. That need may be a, a physical in regard to a food, shelter, a clothing, water, air, and sleep. Uh, that need may be a, a security in regard to safety needs, that is even a retirement, uh, insurance. It also may be uh, a social needs, love, attention, a, a friendship. It may be the need uh, that's defined as needs of esteem. Most of us like to be respected. We like to have some kind of recognition. We like to be appreciated. We like to have some kind of approval concerning our lives. It may be also mental needs. It may be uh, the idea of, of having some kind of understanding about something, to have some knowledge about something, to be in our right frame of mind. Then the may also be, and which is most needed, a spiritual need. The need to uh, be free from sin and guilt that oftentimes bind us in this life. And so uh, sometimes we... Uh, get to the point that we've done all that we can do in regard to uh, satisfying our needs, even pray. So what do we do when we've done all that we have, been, have the ability to do? What do we do when we've exhausted all of our resources? We do as what Jesus says here. Let's again check the book. In Mark chapter 11, around verse number 22, he says it again this way. And Jesus answering said unto them, have what? Faith in God. And so for the next few moments that God may allow us, I'd like us to go to the book of First Kings. The chapter is chapter number 17. And I'd like us to find what God does in regard to allowing us to know that whatever your need might be, God can handle it. Let's check the book. In 1 Kings chapter 17, we begin around verse number one. We find these words. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the Lord, or I should say, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the book of Cherub. That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I, I, have, I have commanded, he says, the ravens to feed thee. The Bible says, that Elijah shows up in the town. He comes before uh, King Ahab. In the Bible he says that I'm here because of God. I stand here because of God. 
And the message that I have from God is there will be no more rain up in hell. Not at all, unless I say so. And so as a result, no doubt, God recognizes that this man now has put his life on the line for him. I need to make sure I get him out of town. But I want you to understand something why this is so crucial here. And a slap in the face for, for Ahab. Ahab is worshiping the God of Baal. That the God of Baal, which is an idol god, is the God that is the God of thunderstorms. In other words, he is serving a God that's supposed to have control of the rain. Now, Elijah has come to town, and Elijah said in so many words, if Baal got anything to say about this thing, let him speak up, because it will not rain unless I say so. So what that says to us, church, very quickly, that oftentimes, that the reason we may come to a need in our lives may just be because we are doing the will of God. I want to say it again. There are times in our lives the reason we come to a need in our lives is because we are obedient to the word of God. He needs safety, he needs food, and he needs water. Sometimes in life, church, it gets to the point where you're doing what you think is the right thing to do. You are giving to the Lord as you purpose and you prosper. You are praying for the needs of those that are in need. You are visiting the sick and the shut in. You are providing for your family. You're taking care of your parents in their old age. You are forgiving those who have trespassed against you. You are doing all that you can and with all of that trouble still comes in our lives and sometimes are simply because we are doing the will of God. But watch God, church. Watch God. The Bible says again, Around verse number three, chapter 17 of First Kings, he says to him, get thee thence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook of Sharon, that is, before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens, he says, to feed thee. Now, the name of the brook is a sheriff, and, and there's something there, church. The word sheriff means to, to cut off, to e eliminate, to downright prune. And sometimes in our lives, we don't understand why things are going on in our lives, but they're going on anyhow. And it's simply because sometimes we're just doing what God says do. We're in the will of God and we don't even recognize it sometimes. And what we're finding here is the only reason that he's in the type that he's in and why? Because he's doing what? The will of of God. But watch God. He is that cherub. Again, the idea is to cut, to eliminate, to prune. And so sometimes in our lives, God is pruning us. He is cutting some stuff off us that we aren't aware that needs to be cut off us, church. Let's uh, uh, check the book. I ask if you would to open your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter number 17, around verse number 18 to 21. Let's uh, uh, check the book. In the book of Matthew, chapter 17, we begin around verse number 18. Listen to what the great book says. In Matthew 17, around verse number 18, we find these words. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, ye, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Here it is. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by what prayer and fasting. And so there are some things in our lives that cannot be gotten rid of unless we pray and fast to the Lord. And so what we find here with Elijah is Elijah needed some alone time with the Lord. God is fixing them and preparing them to go down to Baal and talk to those folks and help them recognize that there's one God and he is God Jehovah all by himself. 
But he must now focus. He must have some things cut off for him, church. Let's check the book in John chapter 15, around verse 1 through verse number 3. Let's check the book in the book of John, John chapter 15, around verse number 1, uh, verse number 3. Listen to what the Bible says. Jesus says it this way. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. In every branch that beareth fruit, he what? He purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so sometimes in life, church, although we are doing some things, there are no doubt some things that we can do greater. But because we are not aware of some stuff in our lives that need to be cut out, perhaps envy, perhaps jealousy, perhaps a, a critical spirit, perhaps a bad word, whatever it might be, God knows. And sometimes God brings us to a point where we need to have some alone time, just me and God. And so we find him at the book of Sherod. But the Bible says, not only does God give him water there, and he finds a hiding place with God there. The Bible says God feeds him. Let's check the book. In 1 Kings again, chapter number 17, around verse number 4, the Bible says this. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And not only will give you water now, I have commanded, the Bible says, the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook of Sherah, that is before Jordan. And the ravens watched this church, brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. He drank of the brook. What's not seen here is that God uses that which is unclean, that which is selfish, to provide for his children. The Bible teaches that of a raven, not, not an eagle, not a hawk, but a raven, a skinny black bird, that the Bible teaches the Jewish folk were forbidden to eat. Let's check the book. In the book of Leviticus chapter 11, we begin around verse number 13. Let's see what the great book says. Again, Leviticus uh, chapter 13, or chapter 11, I'm sorry, verse number 13. Listen to what the Bible says. In Leviticus chapter 11, around verse 13, we find these words. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls, the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the ophrae and the poucher and the kite after his kind and every washer's raven after his kind. And so God will use that which is unclean. But not only was the raven unclean, it says basically in history and study that the raven out of all the birds were one of the most selfish birds. That is, it would not even at times feed its own young. Let's uh, 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 check the book, if you would. Let's see what the great book says. In the book of Job, Job 38, around verse number 41. Let's check the book. In Job 38, around verse number 41, we find these particular words. Job 38, around verse number uh, 41. Here the Lord speaks, and around verse number 41, he says this to Job. Who provideth for the ravens his food? When his young ones cry unto God, they wonder for lack of meat. And so the idea is that even the raven himself at times was very selfish. And that is, he would not sometimes feed his own. What are we saying, church? Sometimes, when we are in need, 
We've already put God in a box of how God has provided for us. But the God that we serve ought not to be put in a box. Matter of fact, cannot be put in a box. And God will do something for us in particular ways that we might not understand, but it's God that's doing his thing. When we study the book of the Bible, I want to say loud and clear that God can take the devil himself or those that work for the devil to accomplish a great work even in our lives. Let's, for the moment, church, uh, check the book. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the verses, verse number 7, verse number 8. Let's check the book. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the chapter is chapter number 2. The verse is verse number 8, verse number 9. Watch what the apostle Paul writes. He utters these words. He says around verse number 7, verse number 8, he says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. What was that mystery? Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of Lords. What are we saying, church? We're saying that God used the devil himself or, or devilish people to accomplish the great greatest gift that could ever occur and that is God sending his son Jesus to die for our sins. Let's check the book. In the book of Revelation chapter 13 around verse number 8. Listen to what the Bible says. See before uh, there was sin uh, there was already a savior. Let's check the book. In the book of Revelation the chapter 13 the verse is verse number 8. Let's notice what the Bible says. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain, the Bible says, from what? The foundation of the world. And so God has his way of blessing us. Sometimes folk are looking for uh, uh, the lotto to come through. Uh, uh, Sometimes folk are wishing somebody to leave them some money. Uh, Sometimes folk are worry, uh, thinking about perhaps I'll go to the bank and they'll give me more than what I, uh, what I put in. Why am I saying, church, God knows how to bless us. Some folk are legitimate. They have a job that they're going through. They're not making enough money. But you know what? The same God is making their ends meet. And they don't know how. I'm saying it is God, church. So we find God using the unclean, the selfish, to provide for his children. And first Kings again, if you would please. Around chapter 17. Let's see what we might discover. Let's check the book. In the book of First Kings, if you would, a chapter again 17. Around verse number uh, seven, we find these words. And it came to pass after a while. He'd been there some time. Don't know how long right now, but he's been there for a while. He's been eating flesh in the morning and also in the evening. The Bible says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up. Because there had been no rain in the land. Church, sometimes we need to recognize that when God faces a judgment on the physical uh, nature of life, that God's children also oftentimes will suffer the same consequences that everybody else does. And I think that says something to us. That sometimes we need to go through the same stuff that other folk are going through. We need to be able to identify with their hurts, their pains, their needs. Because when you go through some stuff that folk are going through, you're not so quick to say, I wouldn't have done this or I would do this because you recognize how it feels. Matter of fact, that's what we can say about Jesus in regard to our lives. Let's check the book. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 2, around verse number 18. Listen to what the Bible says, Hebrew, chapter 2, around verse 18. Even Elijah, the man of God, suffered in regard to no rain, no water. Let's check the book. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrew chapter 2, around verse number 18. Listen to what the great book says. 
In Hebrew 2, around verse 18, we find these words. For in that he himself, talking about Jesus, hath what? Suffered being tempted. He is able to sus us, or that is, help us, them that are tempted. The Lord knows how it is to be tempted. Sometimes folks say, well, the Lord ain't had no girl problem. Can, do you really believe that? Can you imagine the, the Marys and the Marthas and all those that saw his power, saw his might, but at the same time saw his, 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 his kindness, his compassion. He could have gotten over, but thank God he was Jesus. But let's check the book. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, around verse number 15 and 16, listen to what the great book says. Let's Check the book. In the book of Hebrews 4, around verse number uh, 15, watch what the Bible says. We find these words. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was, watch this, but was in what? All points, tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Watch this. Let us therefore, based on the Lord recognizing what we've gone through, he knows our issue, our pains, our concerns, our temptations, our trial. He says, let us what? Therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But let check the book. In the book of First Kings, again, if you were around chapter 17, as the story goes on again, when you have some needs that you have done all that you could do to, uh, uh, to uh, accomplish, and you've gotten to the end of your rope, you've even prayed again, Jesus says, trust God. Let's check the book. Around verse number eight, the Bible says this. And the word of the Lord came unto him. Saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow, woman, there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering up sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee. A little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Watch this church. God does not have to provide for us the same way he has provided for us for years. Or what he did for us yesterday and how he did for us yesterday does not necessarily mean that he has to do the same thing the same way in our lives today. God is that awesome. He does not have to be one way and help me out because he has everything to his disposal. The Bible says he owned uh, the, the, the cattle and the cows and hills and all the silver and the gold is his and he made us all. And God can use ravens to feed folk. God sure enough can do whatever he chooses with. To make provision in our lives. And so we're saying that to say this. Now God sends the man of God to a widow. Now, widows for the most of the time, especially back then, were very poor. She's not only basically poor, but she's also a woman. Women back then were thought of basically as second-class citizens. To be treated basically as a, as a child. But not only that, he sends them to Zarephath, perhaps the center of idolatry. Watch what we're saying, church. He sends the man of God to the worst place that could be, he could be sent to. He also sends them in a situation, a lady, no doubt, that cannot even take care of herself. But yet, watch God. The Bible says, though, what's interesting, that every time God gives Elijah a command, 
He does not fuss or fight and say, Lord, I, 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 what, what you're doing there? I, 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 I don't see it now. He does not complain. The Bible says, whenever God commands or tells him what to do, he does it, and he does it without mumbling or complaining. Watch what the book says. Around verse number 12, I believe it is, the Bible says this. Let's look at verse 11 also. And as she was going to fetch him, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, watch this now. As the Lord thy God loveth, I have not kick but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son that we may what? Eat it. And he says, that. Watch this church. The Bible says, her response to Elijah, Elijah says, get me some water. Matter of fact, while you're going, bring me back a king. She says, in so many words, I swear, based on the Lord God himself, all I have is some flour, she says, some meal, that is, in a battle. It ain't that much. I got a little cruise of all. It ain't that much. Matter of fact, I've already decided that what I'm going to do while I pick up these sticks, no doubt set a fire and cook, I'm cooking for me and my son. And then you know what we're going to do? We're going to die because it's just that bad. What does Elijah do? Just seem like to me, especially if you're a man of God, it would tear your heart apart that you've asked the woman that's in such a dire spirit to do for you when she can't do for herself. It seems like it would rip his heart apart. But watch what the Bible says that he does. Around verse number 13, we find these words. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first. And bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thyself. Elijah at least says, you can make some, some food for you and your son. But make sure I get mine first. It appears that there is something wrong with that. But God has already told Elijah that it would be through this woman, this widow, that your provisions would be taken care of. What sometimes we need to understand is that what God does in our lives oftentimes is test us. To see if in our lives that we're willing to trust them based on his promises. Again, I want to say, Jerry, sometimes the Lord wants us to step out of prayer. And ain't no power. He know what he's going to do. But not only does he want us to do it, he wants us to know that we have that much faith and trust to them that regardless of the circumstances, no matter how dire and how bad and how awful and how ridiculous we think it is, if God said do it, we're willing to do it. Now, in fact, that's a biblical principle as we study. That is doing God's will for us and God blessing us. Let's check the book. In the book of Proverbs 11, if you would, around verse number 25, Let's see what the great book says. Proverbs chapter 11, around verse number 25. Let's check the book. In Proverbs 11, around verse 25, Solomon writes these words. He says, the liberal soul, that is the giver, shall be made fat. The Bible says you'll get fat, church. Can you imagine getting fat? That is with blessings. And he that watereth, the Bible says, 
shall be watered also himself. The Bible says when we are liberal, when we're doing it based on the God that we serve church and not on our own intuition or what we think is right to do, when we do it God's way, the Bible says we'll get fat church. Fat with, with, with the blessings of the Lord. But let's check the book. And the book of Deuteronomy, if you would. Chapter 24, around verse number 19. Let's check the book. In Deuteronomy 24, around verse number 19, we find these words. The book says, When thou uh, uh, cuttest down thy harvest, as God speaks to his people, in your field, and has forgot a sheep in the field. You, 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 you just didn't recognize it was there. You, you, you left it. He says, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord thy God may what? Bless thee in all thy work of thine hand. Church, the principle in the Bible is consistent. When we step out on faith on God, God will bless us. But let's check the book. In the book of Luke, chapter number 6, around verse 38, listen to what the great book says. Luke, chapter 6, around verse 38. Listen to what the book says. In Luke 6, around verse 38, the Bible says this. Give, and it shall be given unto you. He says again, give. And it shall be what? Given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meal, meet with those, it shall be measured to you again. When you give a lot, church, and do what God has best with, the Bible says it's like a waste can that you put stuff in and you just mash it down and you put more stuff in and then mash it down. When we do what God says, based on trusting God, God will bless us. And I say it and I say it loud. We cannot be God, church. Or we give. But sometimes we have this problem. And that is, we want to put God on some preconditions. I want to say it again. Sometime before we launch out on faith of what God has uh, said He'd do for us, if we do this or do that, we give God some, some preconditions. For example, we might say, God, if you get me that job, I'll serve you. Matter of fact, I'm get, I won't even work any overtime. I, I'll serve you. God, if you heal me, if you help me get over the stage four cancer, if you help me get over diabetes, I'll serve you. you, you, you I'll, I'm a new man. I'm a new woman. God. Sometimes some may say, if God would put my marriage back together, God, you, you, you don't know what I would do. But I say to, to all those who make those kind of claims, the bottom line is regardless what God does, trust God. Trust him, church. But watch what the Bible says again. In 1 Kings 17, for a moment, Around verse number 13 and 14, the Bible says this again. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me head out a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. Watch this. Here, here, here is what he gives her as an explanation why. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, because God said it. He says, I, I, I'm saying this to you to take a chance on God, put your faith on God, because I'm here based on the Lord God of Israel. What does he say? Watch this. For verse 14, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the crews of fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she 
and he and her house did eat many days. Church, when you trust God on his word, church, the Bible says that God cannot lie. She trusted him. What do you think of what's happened so far? Elijah has proven that whatever his needs are, God provides. He needed some shelter. He needed a place to hide. God provided. He needed some food and water. God provided. Now he's up to a point when God stopped, where there was no rain. The Bible says God still provided because now God will not feed him with ravens. God will use a poor widow in a bad place. To provide for him. Sure enough, as the Bible says, they were able to eat. I don't know, uh, the Bible says in, in James 5 that it was about three and a half years that it didn't rain. I, I don't know when, what, what, what part right here we're in. But it lasted until it rained. They were able to eat. But watch this. She has seen God's power. She seen God's love. She seen God's mercy. She was down to death some, some meal and, and a little oil. And God not only blessed her to live this day, but until at least it rained church. Again, I say, the Bible says it was three and a half years and then it rained. So sure enough, she, she got to be feeling good now. Elijah got to say, I know God would come through. But that's not the end of the story. And as we close, let's, let's notice just a few thoughts. The Bible says around verse number 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crews of all fail. According, the Bible says, to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass. After these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And the sickness was so, so, so bad that there was no breath left in him. He's dead. And she said unto Elijah, What have I do with thee? Oh, thou man of God, art thou coming to me to call my son to remember us and to slay my son? Church! Sometime when you believe you have gotten over your hump. All of a sudden, church, it appears that the roof caves in. And you don't know now what to do. Can I still trust him? Can you imagine how she feels? Because no doubt her son, this is uh, apparently the only son she has. She, she, he is very dear to her. Perhaps she may have thought that one day he would be able to take care of her. Uh, her, her dreams are now shattered, church. And it's because she says, Elijah, I, did you bring me here? Because of my sense. And oftentimes back then, when something bad happened to someone in their lives, they thought it was because of sin. But that was not the case here. And so I want to say to us, the question may be asked, and that is, why does God allow us to go through such tragedy, pain, and hurt, especially when it's just brought us out of something, and now we're back in it, even in a worse predicament than before? Let me share just a couple of thoughts with you also. One reason I believe may be that we may trust him as the one and only source instead of the eternal resources. I won't say it again. One reason I believe may be that we may trust God as the one and only source instead of trusting the external resources. We must come to understand that there's only one source, that's God. There may be some resources, but the resources, whether we believe it or not, have come from God. You got some money in the bank, 
You got some stocks. You got some bonds. You, 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 you have a, a, a house. You got two houses. You got three houses. You got some cars. You got this. You got that. But you know, sometimes there are sometimes that those resources that you have cannot do you any good. You are dying in the hospital. Money that you had built up is dwelling away because now that insurance that you have that paid 80% and something that you thought paid the other 20%, your bill is so high that now it's destroying what you got in the bank. So one reason again is for us to recognize that there's only one true source. And we need to not hold ourselves on those resources. Let's check the book. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, familiar text around verse number 20, there is only one source that has the power to do it all. The writer says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power the Bible says that work of the earth, God can do anything, church, but fail. But another reason might be this. That we might experience the grace of God in a new, fresh manner. I won't say it again. Another reason might be that God will not allow us to enjoy a fresh set of graces, church. Yes, he helped me on yesterday with this thing. And he helped me two years ago with this thing. But we need something new and Lives to recognize that the same God that helped us yesterday will help us today and tomorrow and forevermore. Let's check the book. In the book of St. Corinthians, chapter 12, very quickly, around verse number 7 through verse number 10, let's see what the great book says. St. Corinthians, chapter 12, if you would, around verse number 7 through about verse number 10, listen to what the great book says. The Apostle Paul, dealing with an issue, with the need in his life, he feels, he says, unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the, uh, of the revelations that were given unto me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, Here those church, my grace is sufficient church for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in my, in my reproaches, in my necessities, in my persecutions, in my distress. For Christ's sake, for when I'm weak, then am I strong. I recognize that the power of God enables me even in my weakness, is a sign of new grace in my life. Then another reason very quickly might be that we may learn to depend on God and God only. Let's check the book. In the book of St. Corinthians, very quickly, around chapter 1, verse number 8, Verse number nine, maybe verse number 10. Let's check the book. In 2 Corinthians, around chapter one, the apostle Paul finds himself this way and watch what he says. He says, for we were not brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia? That we were pressed out of measure, above strength, and so much that we despaired even our life. He said, I thought it was all over. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raised us the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and hath delivered, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. And then finally, as we close, church, we got to get to the rest of the story. In 1 Kings 17, Let's see where we are now. And the lesson will be yours. Watch what the great book says. In chapter 17 around verse number 17 on down, the Bible says this again. 
And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee? Oh, thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my son to remember and to slay my son? But watch Elijah. Elijah got a, a, a problem on his heart too. He has brought this woman to this place at this particular time. And now this is what happens. But watch what the Bible says. And he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a law where he abode and lay him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord, my God, has thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I saw journey by slaying her son? And he stretched forth upon the child three times, carried unto the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, I pray thee, let the child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elisha. And the soul of the child came unto him again. And he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down out of the chamber unto the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. Now watch 24. The Bible says now. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. And so she says, now I know. If God said it, I can believe it. And that's it. So we say to you today, no matter what your need might be, no matter what you're going through, how long you've been going through it, when you got to the end of your rope, don't know what to do. You pray. We say again to you, trust God. There might be someone today not a child of God. We say to you right now, trust God. The Bible says that God has provided a way, as we said earlier, from the foundation of the world, God had already decided how he was going to save me. He was going to send the best he had in heaven. The Bible says in John verse 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God had already decided a way in order to save us from our sin. Now, the Bible teaches us that we need to believe in that Jesus. In John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus says, unless you believe that I am he, he who, he who was chosen to die for the sins of the world, who has become both Lord and Christ. A master, but I'm also the Messiah, the appointed, the anointed one from God. Believe in that Jesus. The Bible says we also must repent. In Acts chapter 17, around 30 and 31, the Bible says, God winked at. He looked over uh, some things that time. But he's commanded all men everywhere to repent. Reason being is because God is going to judge the world. That's power in that church. That shows that God loves us. Folks think they can treat us any kind of way and get away. The Bible says one day it's going to be a judgment. We're going to get those things that God has promised that we'll get, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 8, around verse 35 on down, that there's a man who went to worship on his way back. He was taught about Jesus. What he recognized about Jesus, that baptism was necessary. He says, I see water. What, what, what stopped me from being baptized? The Bible says that Philip the preacher says, if thou believest with all my heart, thou mayest. His response was that he believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. The Bible says they stopped the chariot. They both went down into the water. That shows there was no strength and no pouring. They both went down in the water and the Bible says he baptized. He came up, the Bible says, rejoicing. We say to those that need to Obey Jesus, where you can have someone that will take care of all of our needs. He's the one that we need to choose. And so we say, as we said before, if you need to render obedience to that, 
we'll be glad to assist you. Again, my number is 843-364-9836. Again, 843-364-9836. We'll do our best to assist you. There are other churches in the area, churches of Christ that will be ready, able, and willing to assist you. And so we say, whatever is necessary, whatever is appropriate for you to do, we bid you to do just that. We're now going to continue our service, which now is the administering of the Lord's Supper. In the book of Acts, chapter number 20, around verse number 7, we find an example where we find Christians coming together, and the purpose we find here is to pick, partake of the Lord's Supper. We find these words. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on tomorrow, and continued his speech, the Bible says, until midnight. We also not only find the day that we find them taking the Lord's Supper, but we also find the, the manner of how the Lord's Supper should be uh, uh, taken. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, around verse number uh, 23, Paul finds an issue going on that ought not to occur, especially in partaking of the Lord's Supper, that they were, were almost dining as if there was a buffet here. And so he addresses that, and he says around verse 23, he says, this is the disposition that you need to have. He says, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take you, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he cut. Let us give thanks for the bread and for the cup. Dear God, we're very thankful for the privilege, the honor to be able to commemorate your son's uh, death, but not only his death, his resurrection. We ask you please to bless the bread which represents his body, the cup of the fruit of the vine that represents his blood, that we'll take it in such a way that will bring glory and honor to your name, that we will remember and look forward to his return again. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. We now come to a, another portion of our service, which is the uh, contribution of giving. We find an example in the Bible concerning this giving. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, we find where Paul instructs the church there and other uh, congregations uh, to take up a special collection for the poor saints in Jerusalem. And he utters these words. He says, now, concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, 
Let every one of you live by him as though as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering, he says, when I come. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, he talks more about that same collection. He writes in this letter, these words, the kind of disposition, the attitude that we need to have, the frame of mind. He says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us give. Let us uh, give thanks for the contribution. Again, dear God, we're very thankful that you've allowed us the ability to give a portion back of what you've blessed us with. Our prayers that we've given in such a way that it brought glory and honor to your name. We ask you please to help us to use these funds in such a way that you will be happy with, that you will be glad with, that again, it will glorify your name. Thank you most of all for Jesus, who died to one day give us an opportunity to see your face in peace. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. Uh, we're going to get ready to conclude our service. Uh, we know we end up doing a, a, almost a double prayer, but that prayer was certainly in reference to the contribution. And so we're going to uh, uh, close our services uh, with a closing prayer. Let's pray, everybody. Again, dear God, our, our prayer is that we, first of all, thank you. For we are aware that we're not worthy for your love, your, your kindness, your grace, for your mercy. But still, you, you treat us better than we treat ourselves. And so we say, thank you again for another day, another honor, another privilege to worship you. And our prayer certainly is that we worship you in such a way that you've been pleased with. Again, we ask you to continue to bless this nation. Bless us in such a way, dear God, that... We'll do our part, and we certainly pray for those that you've allowed to now be uh, over us in regard to directing uh, the civil government down here. But help us never to forget that you are really the real boss. You're the real uh, president. You're not only the president of the United States of America, but you're the president of the entire world, the entire universe. And so we say to you, thank you so very much for all that you do for us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we ask it all and give thanks to you. Amen. Again, we say thank you, everybody, for your love and your kindness and for being a part of our uh, service today. May God bless you and bless you all in a mighty, mighty special way. We want to say to our, our men, remember today at 4 uh, uh, p.m., God allow us, we'll be at the building here and we will uh, have our men's Bible class. <clears throat> Brother uh, Bob White will be conducting that class. We want to say uh, that we believe uh, very strongly that the ladies today in their Bible class early had an awesome good time uh, in the Lord, and, and we appreciate uh, their effort and their energy. And our prayer certainly is that whatever we do, whether we believe it to be small, medium-sized, or big, if there's such a thing, that we remember that God ought to be the one that gets the glory. And so again, uh, thank you, everybody. Again, as we said before, we are conscious of what's going on in the world with the uh, with the COVID, uh, uh, we are.